Stephanie, if you could start by talking about the title of the work. It's a, a title in Latin to, the, to mean fuller meaning, um, but that you've applied a specific meaning to the new video that you've commissioned as a result of your inclusion in the 10th the satellite program. Could you just start by talking maybe about the, the, the decision to choose that title? Sure. The phrase census plenior, uh, on the one hand, it's a, it's, a, it's a Latin phrase, as you said, that, that, uh, that means literally fuller meaning. Uh, at the same time, it has a very particular use in the Catholic hermeneutics, in the interpretation of the Bible itself. In Catholicism, uh, uh, census plenior refers to a kind of particular way of thinking about how we can read the word beyond simply the text. Um, when approaching the Bible, um, what tools do we have to interpret and understand what we read? Um, how do we make decisions about the broader information that we uh, and resources intellectually that we bring to bear on um, on the text itself? I th think a lot about the uh, kind of European tradition of hermeneutics as I approach my work in the sense that this question of interpretation, what does it mean to understand? How do we know that we understand? Um, what are the limits of understanding? Those are at the core of uh, my practice. In the work Census Plenier, the, the work poses a specific relationship to the practice of mime through the uh, ordained minister Susan Webb and the Master Mime Ministry of Harlem. And for me, what was so fascinating about encountering that practice is that it was one unknown to many people who know about the history of mime. So could you talk about how you encountered this specific practice of mime that's very much part of the 21st century? Sure. I didn't grow up as a religious person, but I have uh, always had a relationship to the church. It's difficult for me to identify my first experience of mime in the, uh, in the church, but I can um, point to a very um, strong, very particular experience, um, which is at, at the funeral service of my grandfather. I was then and still am um, fascinated by and deeply moved by the uh, practice of mime as a way of uh, extending the text of gospel song sort of into the body um, and through the body. So it um, became very clear to me that this was a different way to think about movement, a different way to think about the, the body as a kind of mediator. What's interesting to me about Susan Webb is the way in which her work exists at the intersection between multiple modes of, of, of making. She has developed in conversation with others who practice uh, this movement form that refers to a history of, of black dance, that refers to 20th century physical theater and mime, um, but that also um, draws um, much more broadly from a, a kind of range of ritual uh, and uh, historical traditions. From the perspective of, of Susan Webb, I think pantomime is the foundation of all movement traditions, that to imitate through movement is the beginning of, of any kind of um, theatrical tradition, um, any kind of movement-based um, cultural, cultural tradition. For me, what is, what's so challenging, what's so fascinating about, the, uh, about her practice is that it invites us to think in a new way about uh, how movement can it, it function not as performance. So how can we find other models for thinking about what it means to move for a viewer? I'm trying to get this idea that maybe there is a radical black tradition that, that kind of doesn't only contextualize your work, but actually gives another art historical trajectory that we might want to open up with regards to how black artists, particularly working with new media, have had to sort of uh, find a, a, a language within which to talk about issues of, of issues around race but in ways that either are more abstracted or that nuance that narrative. Um, um, for me my practice is really about um, finding new forms, um, new trajectories, new routes, new um, pathways for thinking about the ways in which black radical expression in the US and not exclusively in the US has flourished, has developed. Um, I'm constantly sort of thinking about where we can look 
to find fresh thinking about what it is that art can do, fresh thinking about what it, what, what it is that movement can do, fresh thinking about how we communicate with each other. And I mean, part of the reason that it's complicated when you put it in this way um, of, of, around black, yeah. like framing of the black experience, yeah. is that I actually don't think um, you know I, I I mine the history of black expression because it's because it's been so rarely considered, not because the tools that I find there can only be used to frame black right. experience, um, and not because framing framing black experience um, as a kind of um, as a kind of referent is is my goal, my only goal, or the most important goal, or even you know um, what I think black artists um, are most interested in these days. Um, instead, it's um, it's really to find to consider what has um, been overlooked by the sort of dominant narratives of art history to find other models, other ways of thinking about what it is that art can and should do and and be.